Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Um, hopefully we started on time. Looks like we did. And as always, a mic check. I'm um, using a, another setup today. Uh, looks to be working on my end. So hopefully it's working on your end. Uh, what we are going to cover today, uh, most importantly, we're going to discuss this brand new membership launch that we're doing. Uh, but we're going to actually, I want to make it educational. So we're going to dive in and talk a lot, uh, as we sometimes do about the different options you have when it comes to training your dog, the pros and cons of each. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about pricing today and like how much you can expect to spend when it comes to training your dog, what you can expect to get out of training a dog uh, in these different uh, methods, whether it's a board and train or private training, the pros and cons of each of them. And uh, if you pay attention, you might see a deer in the background. Um, they come by in the mornings like this and then in the afternoon. Uh, last night, there were five of them out hanging out. And uh, yeah, no paid deers in the background. Not yet, Alex. You will see them. In fact, you'll see them before me because I'm paying attention to you all here. So uh, without further ado, let's dive in. Uh, basically, what's going on is my team has been working tirelessly in the background for months and months. And uh, we've been preparing for this for actually over a year. My vision has always been to be able to offer a one-stop shop for pretty much everything you need to get both basic and advanced obedience for your dog. Everything you need to have that perfect house dog and more, uh, which is exactly what we do in our in our you know very uh, premium VIP board and train programs. Uh, the sole focus, and when people call and ask like, well, what will my dog learn? I'm like, everything you need for a house dog and more. Everything you need. Uh, we don't pretend to, to, you know, we can do bite work, uh, but that's not what we're selling here. Um, that's that's something maybe one day in the future. But um, first and foremost, too, because even when people call and they say, hey, I want a dog that does protection work. I said, well, your basis of protection is to have stellar obedience. It's really not that hard to make a dog mean or make a dog want to bite something. Uh, and when you finally get that, uh, that's great. But if you don't have brakes in the steering wheel, uh, you're going to crash into a tree. You know, that dog's going to hurt somebody. So obedience is first and foremost, uh, even with my time spent as a police canine handler, trainer, uh, supervisor, we focus a ton on our obedience all day, every day. Uh, we would do our obedience routines. And uh, we actually have, we don't talk about it a lot, but we have a second channel. Uh, it's called Garrett Wing, G-A-R-R-E-T-W-I-N-G. And uh, what that channel's for is for folks who want to become professional dog trainers, folks who are interested in making a living in the dog training community or just dogs in general. But we also uh, go in and talk about um, police canine incidents, like recent ones. We show them, uh, we break them down, and uh, you'll see in a lot of instances where uh, obedience was either not only necessary but possibly even lacking and the lack of obedience uh, can sometimes make uh, life uh, more difficult, the job more difficult for a police canine handler. So all, all I'm getting at is obedience, obedience, obedience. Uh, even when people come to me with problems like, hey, my dog is uh, leash reactive. You know what the answer is? Obedience. Hey, my dog is jumping on my guest. Obedience. My dog refuses to come back to me. It's going to run out in the street and get hit one day by a car obedience so obedience really is is pretty much the catch-all and uh what what is obedience maybe we should we should describe that and it's pretty plain and simple to me but maybe it's not to you uh simply put if you ask your dog to do something they make a conscious decision to listen to you uh, but what most folks don't know is every single time you ask your dog to do something you give it a command every single time it makes a conscious decision whether it's in its best interest or not dogs are not stupid they're not robots they don't just listen to us for for you know just because or or the myth is that the dogs listen to us to make us happy uh yeah there's some truth to that but they want to make us happy because when we're happy we give them the things that they want that make them happy uh so ultimately it's all about them dogs are, are actually pretty selfish creatures and and God love them, right? Um, they are always looking to better their circumstances and better their environment and improve, uh, you know, to, to avoid the suck, right? It's better to have a Kong filled with peanut butter than it is to not. And so whatever they can do to achieve that, they're going to try their best. So anyways, enough about that. So that that's really what obedience is and, and why obedience matters is because without it, 
We can have dogs with, with no purpose in life, no job. Um, and they're going to put all that energy into something. And so obedience is one of those jobs, one of those really clean, clear jobs that we would want them to do that they can pour all their energy into. And I'll just give you a quick little example of that. When you have guests come over to your house, right, uh, on a holiday or whatever, your dog's going to be super jacked, excited, motivated, or maybe super territorial, right? Maybe they're going to want to either jump on them and lick them or jump on them and bite them or find out who they are. Either way, that's the dog doing a job and doing it to a very high level. Like, oh, boy, yeah, your dog can jump pretty good. In fact, it scratched me in my face. It jumped so high. It's doing a job, a job it thinks it's supposed to be doing, which is greeting guests. And it's doing that because it wants to get something out of it, right? Because it's a selfish creature. It doesn't really care it scratched your face. It's not thinking about that. It's thinking about um, getting that pet from you. And then the other end of the spectrum is the dog that maybe doesn't want to lick you in the face. It, it might want to, um, you know, exert its dominance on you or, or be territorial and let protect its family, we should say, its pack. It's doing a really good job at that, right? It's charging the front door. It's barking and trying to kill the mailman. And we don't need the dog killing the mailman. He's doing a great job. You've seen the videos out there. Dogs busting through the front doors, busting through windows, protecting the home. And we applaud the dogs for that. But 99 out of 100 times, it's just the mailman or the neighbor. And so what obedience does is say, hey, all that energy you got, all that drive you want to get pet. All that drive, you want to express, you know, your natural instincts to be territorial. I love it. I love that drive. But let's cap that drive. Let's get a little impulse control. And instead, I need you to do a more important job than jumping and scratching my friend's face or knocking them over and breaking their hip or whatever it is. I need you to sit and not move. And if you sit and stay right there, you're going to get all the love and affection you could ever ask for. But you got to do that job and you got to do it really good. It could be a sit stay, a down stay, a play sports stay. And so we channel that dog's natural drives into a job that we want them to do. Because they're going to do a job. Don't be fooled by that. They're going to do a job. So this time we're picking the job for them. We're acting as a, you know, as an owner should. But we think of it always as like a bar and a restaurant. All right, We have to be the owners and the managers of that bar and restaurant and make sure that our dogs – are doing the job we want them to do, which is to not attack our guests when they come over. And it's not to uh, lick them in the face necessarily uh, first thing when they come in, you know. So anyways, you get the idea. And, and that, in not so much of a nutshell, let's call it a big nutshell, is obedience. Giving a dog a purpose in life, fulfilling their need and their desires to, to do work and uh, give them good jobs to do. And again, when they do good, we're paying for it. So it's a win-win for everybody. Now, as far as obedience goes, how do we do that? Um, obedience is can be taught a number of ways. Um, there are board and train programs out there. Pretty much every city in America has some type of a trainer that will offer board and train services, which is what one of the things we specialize in. Then, of course, there's private lessons. A typical private lesson, you're going to – and let's talk numbers here. Typical board and train program costs around $1,000 per week. A typical program is four to six weeks. This is a good program. So you're looking at spending on average minimum four to $6,000 for a board and train program, one that's worth a damn. And even if you pay four to $6,000, doesn't necessarily mean you're really getting all that value out of it. You might. There's some fantastic trainers out there that will, will absolutely give you your money's worth. And then there's a lot of people still uh, struggling to, you know, provide that value, we should say. And especially at those lower price points, and I don't even want to talk about it, but there are board and train programs that are around the $2,000 to $2,500 range. You got to stay away from those. I'm not going to name names. I'm just telling you, as a friend, when people call and ask me, hey, I'm looking at this in this program. There's one for $2,500. And then we look to see, like, no, 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 no. You want to stay away from that. We call it the McDonald's of dog training. Old school, crank and yank, bang your dog out in two weeks. You cannot properly teach obedience in a balanced method in two weeks, a full obedience. Yeah, you can start to, you can start the process. 
but you can't have a finished product. Uh, the way they're able to put out a finished product in two weeks, and it's not to, to put to put shame on them. Um, they're doing the best they can. They're doing what's been taught to them, and they're trying to help people out at a certain price point. So for that, I understand it, right? You want to spend, um, you know, folks out there maybe can only afford about $2,500 when it comes to doing a board and train, but stand by, we're going to give you a better option than, than a, a McDonald's board and train program. Uh, but when you're spending the $2,500, they are cranking your dog, literally, uh, through the program. There's no food involved. There's no treats. There's no reward. There's no time for that. Uh, there's no time to charge up a clicker or charge up a marker word. Uh, they just go old school with it. Uh, it works. It's effective. Flattens your dog out really good. Um, and then because they're charging such a cheap price, they have to do quantity over quality. And so instead of training maybe two or three dogs at a time, they're training 10, 15, 20, 30 dogs at a time. And if it's, it is a larger facility, uh, some of those facilities are having, they're not training your dog. The owner's not training your dog. Uh, master trainers are not training your dog. Folks who they just hired uh, maybe a month or two ago, uh, minimum wage are training your dog. So ah, that's why we call it the McDonald's of dog training. It has some value, right? Like if you're hungry, you can go to McDonald's, you can get a cheeseburger and you might not be hungry anymore, but we all know it's not that great for your health. So again, it's not to talk crap about it. It's there. It works. They've been in business for a while. There's a lot of them out there. If it works for you, go for it. Uh, but again, we're going to show you an alternative that's actually less expensive and better. And one more thing on those programs, whether you spend four or $6,000 or more on a board and train program or two to $3,000 on, on a uh, more McDonald's type of board and train program, this is what we've seen across the entire industry is that the trainers spend little to no time showing you how to maintain the behavior that's been put into the dog. All right. They are not robots in that. You just download the software and they're set for life. And the dog now knows how to sit and to lay down and to stay. And forever it's going to maintain sits, downs, and stays. It doesn't work that way. Trust me, I've been doing this a very long time. One of the things that sets us apart, and I explain this to, to my clients and, and would-be clients all the time, what sets us apart is the amount of time and energy and effort and love we put into teaching the owners how to maintain the behavior. We don't even call them owners anymore. By the time we're done with them, they are what we call owner trainers. Uh, because we say this too, I don't care who you send your dog to to get training. It could be the best trainer in the world. If they do not show you how to maintain it, that dog will quickly, uh, all those behaviors will go either extinct and or the dog will become reprogrammed. And I'm going to actually share something that I've never shared before on a public uh, platform that actually I think really summarizes what can happen in any given boarding train program, but especially the McDonald's ones. And, and I'm bringing it up to a point is that no matter who trains your dog, best trainer on the planet, they can only bring your dog about 90 to 95% of the way there with the best odds. They will never make your dog 100% with you because they can't look like you, they can't sound like you, they can't act like you, smell like you, uh, all of that. And so the dog, because they're not a robot, will respond to the trainer, but when the dog comes back home, because he spent four or six weeks away from the owner, when the owner tries to uh, take over and give those commands to the dog, the dog looks at him like, nah, bro, nah. I ain't listened to you for the first two years before you put me in the pro program. Yeah, you sent me to the program and I'm going to listen to that trainer because he knows what he's doing. And, and, you know, he was firm and fair and consistent with me and he gave me the treats and he showed me the way. But you, bah, I'm not listening to you. And we see it all the time. Husband, wife, uh, couples, kids. That's why sometimes your dog will listen to the husband, but not the wife or the dog will listen to uh, the wife, but not the kids. It's because the dogs are not stupid, right? They know what's in their best interest. They know that that kid's just going to ask them to sit down a thousand times and show off to their friends but the kid doesn't have access to the good treats, so I'm not listening to the kid. Oh, the, the husband is the softy. He lets me get away with murder. I don't got to listen to that guy. He's going to give me a treat and a belly rub whether I listen to him or not. So that's what I'm getting at. It doesn't matter who trains your dog. 
if you don't know how to drive it, if you don't know how to maintain it, the dog's not going to listen to you. It's just, it's just a fact. We see it all, all the time. It's called reversion. And so let me share that story with you. It's going to take me a second to find it. It's a, a screenshot I grabbed from an Instagram message that was sent to me. It's got to be a year ago um, from somebody I, I don't actually know, just a random message, but it was so powerful that I snagged it and, and I've shared this ever since with every single one of my uh, board and train clients. And here it is. And I'll, I'll just give you a quick uh, shot of it. I'm going to cover up the person's name, uh, but just to show you that I'm not, you know, making anything up. It's right there. All right. So it says, I see that you're a dog trainer and this is probably an odd question. I sent my dog to a local trainer and paid five thousand dollars for his training my guess would be probably a five or six week boarding train he came back great for the first two weeks then went right back to where he was i told the lady trainer and we came in for a refresher and she walked me through what to do it did not help so i contacted her again and she told me that me and the dog's personalities just don't mesh and he'll never behave for me is that a correct statement I believe if my dog is trained properly, then he should listen to me no matter what. That's a, that's, that's a lot in that, that one uh, paragraph. And let's, let's talk about what happened there. Uh, her name's Adriana. She might even be listening right now. Adriana spends $5,000, sends her dog to what should be, you know, at that price point, should be a pretty good program. Came back, dog was money for two weeks. And in two weeks, what happened is the dog didn't forget the training. Adriana reprogrammed the dog. What do you mean reprogram, Garrett? Like your cell phone, there are software updates. Your dog gets a software update every minute of every day. What? Is, what, what? Software? My dog is not a computer. No, I know that. It's, it's a figure of speech. Bear with me. The dog was programmed by the trainer, uh, or reprogrammed really, when you go to the front door and we, we ask you to sit, you're supposed to sit the first time every time and maintain that sit. And when I open the door, you don't shoot out. That's the new programming that the trainer installed, right? Took a while to do that time and repetition and that software was installed, right? Now the dog knows how to do that. Dog comes back with the owner and the trainer obviously did not spend enough time teaching the owner to maintain the training. And in other words, become a trainer themselves, a mini trainer. And so what happens is one day around a week or two into this, the dog's home trainer's not there. Owner doesn't actually know what to do. She tells the dog to sit and the dog looks at her because he's not a robot and goes, Hmm, I don't see a treat in your hands. <laughs> I don't smell a treat either. You know what? I don't feel like sitting. I'm going to go run out the front door because I saw a bunny through the window and the bunny right now is more important and more powerful than anything you have on your person. And so uh, no treat, no sit. And Adriana goes, she doesn't know that that's the internal conversation the dog's basically having. So she, she tells it to sit again and it doesn't sit. And so what does she do? She's got work. She's got things to do. She's like, oh, wh whatever, let's just go for a walk. And they go out, probably dogs on a leash and the dog shoots out the front door and chases after the bunny and has a great time doing it. And what the dog learned in that one rep, in that one very powerful rep, when mommy tells me to sit, I don't really need to sit. All I got to do is wait her out a few seconds. She's going to open the door and then we're going to go chase bunnies. Rock and roll. The dog was reprogrammed in one rep. But imagine, let's be honest, that's probably a rep that's happening two or three times a day. Now, two weeks later, like Adriana said, in two weeks, to catch those up, we're just coming in, in two weeks, that dog was reprogrammed because of one little rep here, one little rep there of getting away with it, the dog 
got reprogrammed, new software update. That what's the you want to name that software update? It's called don't listen to mom. You don't need to. You still get what you want. And so the dogs will always take the easier route. They'll always take the path of least resistance, just like we as humans do. Right. So anyhow, um, that that is just in a nutshell showing you what can happen. And it's sad that it's that way when you spend five or six thousand dollars and send your dog to a board and train program that all of that training can go out the window in as little. Well, it happened in Adriana in two weeks. In reality, I tell my clients within 24 to 48 hours, if you don't do everything we tell you to do to a T and maintain the training, I, I, I'm not asking you to train your dog. The software's already being installed. I'm just saying continue to run the same program. Don't reprogram the dog. When you tell your dog to sit, trust me when I tell you after six weeks of training with me, the dog knows how to sit. We've done thousands and thousands of reps of that. And we've paid them for every single one of them. Your dog knows how to do it. That doesn't mean it's going to do it just because you ask your dog to do it. So we have to uh, ask. And if the dog fails to comply, then we can use leash pressure, e-collar pressure, spatial pressure. You can wait them out, whatever it is. But they are not going to get what they want until they comply. Now, once they comply, it's, it's party time. It's party time. So. Anyways, if you don't know how to use a leash, if you don't know how to use hand signals, voice commands, follow through, uh, deliver a leash correction, deliver an e-collar correction, how to motivate your dog, how to use marker training to mark the behaviors that you like, to mark the behaviors that are unacceptable, then your dog will also be reprogrammed. I don't care how much money you spend on it. You have to be what we're referring to as owner trainers. I don't know anybody else in the industry that's using that term. Feel free to steal it. Uh, owner trainers. That's what we're trying to do. And that's what we do at DIY Canine. Because at DIY Canine, we show you how to be your dog's own trainer so that you can do the programming. And if you know how to program the dog, then it's pretty, uh, in, you know, it goes without saying, if you program the dog, you know how to maintain that programming. And you know what the dog is capable of. So that's really it in a nutshell. And I always find that so interesting to have that conversation. And I have that conversation well before any client ever signs up in my program or sends me money. I said, I got to make sure you're the right, the right client for me because I don't care who trains your dog. I could have your dog for two years. If you don't know how to maintain it, all is lost. I would like to think that Thanos, my personal dog, is pretty well trained, right? He's not perfect. There's no such thing, but he's pretty good. Just because Thanos is pretty good, and I hand the leash to someone who has no idea what they're doing, right? I promise you, Thanos won't listen to them. Thanos looks at him like, nah, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. You're a joke. So, anyways, that that got off uh, kind of on a deep, deep, uh, Went deep down that rabbit hole, but I, I'm very passionate about it, and uh, I love sharing that with you all. And and anyways, the whole point of it, just to summarize, doesn't matter how much you spend on training, doesn't matter who you send your dog to, uh, they can train it to the moon and back. If you don't know how the programming works and you don't know how to maintain it, it you're wasting your money, and that's a lot of money to waste five or six thousand dollars, like Miss Adriana there. So instead. Uh, what we are going to recommend to you, instead of spending five or $6,000, what this entire conversation is about is that we finally have produced uh, the five core uh, courses on our platform, and we've put them into a bundle for the first time ever. No more do you need to come to our website and kind of like, oh man, you know, I can only afford this course or, or that course, or which one should I start with? And, you know, I, I just don't even... Don't worry about any of that anymore. We now have a one-stop uh, shop option, uh, a one option that covers it all. It's a premium membership. It is going to be launched on Tuesday. So if you want to find out more about it, uh, simply go to our website. If you're not already, enter your information. You're just going to register. We are not going to spam you. We're not going to sell your information. It's all in-house. We're simply going to, on Tuesday, I think around 7 or 8 in the morning, we are going to start sending out a few emails 
telling you more about the membership, what it's going to cost, what it includes, yada, yada, yada. But and I'm, I'll tell you now uh, what it's going to include. I'll give you a, an overview. All five of our of our best courses, starting with Puppy Essentials. Puppy Essentials covers potty training, crate training and puppy manners and biting. Everything you need from either before you get a puppy to prepare for it when it comes home, because we talk about all the equipment you're going to need, when to feed it, when to water it, uh, when to take it out. Everything you need for that first month or two when your puppy comes home, right? Because we don't, there's no real obedience covered in that because first off, you can't really teach an eight week old puppy like obedience. They're, they're what we call sleepy. Yeah, you can kind of feign it with food lures and make the dog. Uh, like sitting down for food, but they don't really know what they're doing. Um, and I'm not saying don't do that. By all means, do that because we'll talk about uh, the course that covers that. But the puppy essentials, in a, it, it's the essential course you need to get moving on the path to success with your puppy because nobody cares if your dog attention heals in your kitchen or sits and downs for a treat like a little badass. If it's pooping and peeing all over your house, if it's causing a ruckus in the crate, barking, howling, uh, all that craziness we got to get that out of the way first, and that's what's covered in Puppy Essentials. And, of course, the puppy biting, the manners, all of that. We fix that early so that by the time your puppy's like three or four months old, well, you, I was going to say three or four months old, it's potty trained. No, we have a, a system that, when done correctly, can get your dog potty trained in as little as 48 hours. The proof's in the pudding. We actually have Google reviews from just random folks all over the world, actually, talking about how it actually works. I know it works as we do it on the regular. Uh, it doesn't, and let me not be fooled here. It doesn't work with every puppy. It works with the majority of them, but there's some puppies that just, whew, it, it could take weeks to get them potty trained. It's just kind of, and it really depends on, on how good you are with it and timing and, and a bunch of factors. But either way, it is a proven system that will get your puppy potty trained lickety split. But moving on, um, once we have that core thing done, and the puppy biting, god awful puppy biting. We now have a three or four month old dog that has no bad manners, is completely potty trained, crate trained, no separation anxiety, uh, no food aggression problems. We are now on a path to success. We have like that core structure. Next, the obedience 101, right? Obedience 101 is a 100% uh, positive reinforcement based training. It's all about food luring, how you can use food and treats to lure your dog into basic and advanced obedience commands. What are we talking about? Sits, downs, stays, going in the crate, coming out of the crate, going on a place board, staying on a place board, recalls, uh, on leash healing, off leash healing, focus, uh, might be missing a few, but like the core, the strong core, and then some of everything you need for a house dog and more like everything to become a professional dog trainer, to be honest with you, uh, that foundation level. And in other words, how you teach your dog through reinforcement, through food and treats and belly rubs, how to do what we want them to do. Like, what is a sit? What is a recall? What do you mean go on place? Oh, does you mean that? Yes. And if you do it, I pay you. It's a wonderful course. Um, really, really. And that's great for, let's talk about what who, who that course is for real quick. Puppies as young as eight weeks all the way up to a, really a dog of any age, but the prerequisite for that course so that you're not wasting your money on it is that your dog has to have some semblance of food drive. The more food drive, the better. They'll excel in the course. We say, well, what if my dog's older and it has no food drive? Trust me, every dog on the planet has some level of food drive. Otherwise, they wouldn't be alive because they have to eat, right, to be alive. So even dogs with a little to no food drive we teach you in the course how to build food drive, how to build that motivation, all these tips and tricks we've learned over the years to really bring out more and more and more food drive. You, trainers basically say there's no such thing as too much food drive, and I tend to agree with that. I mean, we, we, we like the puppies that are literally biting their fingers off to get the food, and we have to wear gloves in order to handle them. So moving on, that's what Obedience 101 is, teaching your dog what we want, right? We consider it like the ABCs. Another course we have, uh, moving on, we'll go right into the next one, uh, which is Leashed. Leashed is our newest course, and it is uh, taking Obedience 101 a step further. Excuse me, Obedience 101, it's the next level, if you like. But you don't necessarily need Obedience 101 to start Leashed. Let's we'll talk about it real quick. What is Leashed? Leashed 
is to teach your dog or puppy. And it's applicable for dogs of any age, any temperament, any breed. It doesn't matter. Leashed is like my favorite course. If I had to pick one, and they're all my favorite, to be honest with you, but leash is our newest one. And what I love about it is if you have that stubborn dog that has zero food drive, this course will work, meaning skip obedience. One, one on one goes straight to leash. If you have a dog that has food drive, thank God you can now use the food to teach the leash pressure. And that's what the course is about. In a nutshell, how you can use the leash as a steering wheel and a brake and teach your dog commands with the leash, right? Because if your dog's not food motivated, you can't really use food to teach it to sit and down. It's just not going to work. But you can use the leash and leash pressure and very slowly, very gently, very methodically introduce the dog to leash pressure so they understand what it is and how to turn it off. In other words, you can use the leash to teach a sit, a down, to go on a place, to teach a stay, to go in a crate, to heal uh, beautifully on leash. You can use the leash to teach recalls, you name it. And more importantly, more importantly, when you combine it with Obedience 101, the beauty of leash is it underscores everything you've taught your dog. What do I mean? I'll give you another quick example. If you're at that front door, like uh, Miss Adriana was with her dog, you paid $5,000 for training, or you paid money for the obedience one-on-one course and you've taught your dog how to sit with treats, but you're at the front door and you're running late to work and you don't have treats on you and your dog's feeling stubborn, doesn't want to listen, and you need the dog to sit. You will tell them to sit. And if they fail to sit, I mean, they're looking right at you like, uh, what? You want me to sit? Don't feel like it. That's when we use the leash to deliver what's called a correction with direction. We use the leash. Uh, it doesn't always have to be a correction, by it, mind you. But we're going to use the leash and tell the dog through the use of the leash, you must sit. You have to sit. There's no, we're not getting reprogrammed today, bud. We're not, when I tell you to sit, you must sit. It, that's, that's obedience. True obedience is to listen to you the first time, every time. So it, it now gives you uh, the ability to enforce the rules. And once the dog understands that, and this is the important part, don't, don't let me skip over this now. That does not mean we are sentencing our dog to a lifetime of corrections. Meaning, oh, Garrett's saying every time I tell my dog to sit, I got to pop him on the leash to make sure he does it. No, absolutely not. That's the beauty of using leash pressure correctly, teaching it properly. And what we say is this, we'll get to that point probably where you ask the dog to sit because their motor's up too high. They're jacked. They're energized. They're lazy. They're stubborn. You have no food. Fill in the blank. It doesn't matter. The dog knows exactly what you're asking it to do, but is refusing to do it. We use the leash, deliver a correction, and the dog goes, oh, oh, it's like that? It's like that. Please do it the first time. If you do it, I'll love you. If you don't do it, doesn't matter. You're still going to do it, and when you do it, I'm still going to love you. And once that is clear to the dog that you have authority, that you do not accept anything less than what they are capable of doing, you don't need to use the leash anymore. You don't need to deliver a correction because you've already corrected that behavior and you've really stamped in that programming and the dog now listens to you. What do I mean? The next day or later that afternoon when you're at the door and you tell your dog to sit, it's going to sit without needing to use the leash because you've already showed it what happens when it doesn't listen. Make sense? And so we, when we talked earlier about every time you tell your dog to do something, they make a conscious decision whether it's in their best interest or not. We've already shown the way like it's in your best interest because there's a chance I'll pet you, love you, praise you, give you food. But if you try to go do something other than what I ask you, it's closed. That pathway is closed. You can't not sit because I'm going to make you sit anyways. It's always in your best interest to listen to me because if you do listen to me pot of gold if you don't listen to me you are going to listen to me you have to we force you to go right and you're always on the right path the path to success anytime you try to veer off that path and do something we don't want you to do you're met with a with a six foot wall it's just closed it's a permanent detour and once the dog understands that you 
you, and I mean you as an individual, not the whole family, like obviously every person in the family is their own individuals, but everyone in the family knows how to use the leash to enforce the rules, then the dog becomes compliant. And in other words, is truly obedient, obedient. They listen to you the first time every time because they don't really have a choice and it's always in their best interest. And they live a much happier, everyone's happier. And, and that's what it's all about. So that's what leash does for you. And that's why I think we can spend 20 minutes talking about it because I'm in love with it. Uh, because it's applicable for puppies as young as eight weeks old. Yes, yes, sir, Bob. Uh, we show you how to use a slip lead, flat collar, prong collar. Uh, we don't really mess with harnesses in it. Um, but whatever your dog's age, breed, or temperament, we, sh we and we have dogs of different age, breeds, and temperament in the leash course, and we show you how to do it. But enough on that one. Then we have the perfect walk course. So right now, the perfect walk course, killer course, teaches you how to uh, walk pretty much any dog of any age. We would say perfect walk's better for dogs that are around three to four months old. I wouldn't use perfect walk on, on young pups. Uh, th there's no need for it, right? Like you shouldn't be walking your eight week old puppy down the sidewalk. Like they're going to go about 20 feet and then they're done. So let's wait till they're a little more rambunctious, three, four months old and beyond. I don't care how old your dog is. The perfect walk is, is, is it baby. like the success we've had with that course is, is just crazy. We have people sending in videos of them walking their dog from literally all over the world. Every manner of dog, every, every manner of person in all places across the planet it warms my heart. Like they show the before and after of their dog. And it, it, it's amazing what can be accomplished in that course. And that, that's really what that course is about. A fast track your dog to walk perfectly on a leash. And then finally, um, our, 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 uh, I guess you could call it like the pinnacle of all of our courses is unleashed. Y'all should be familiar with it by now. And that is, uh, uh our e-collar course. So, I don't even want to get in too much on it. It's simply put, I, I don't want to, to brag. It's the best e-collar course uh, out there on the internet, period. Uh, even in in-person. I don't think there's an in-person course that goes into the depth that we do uh, when it comes to the e-collar. So just love that course and the proof's in the pudding. We have people, same thing, walking their dogs off leash, getting reliability like beyond their wildest dreams. And I can't say enough good things about Unleashed, but it's Unleashed is, is the, the, the cherry on top of all the other courses we've talked about. And in fact, one of the things we talk about in our courses is totem pole theory, how you build this totem pole of obedience and unleashed e-collar work is, is, is right towards the top. So having said all of that, y'all probably waiting like, what Gary, you talk too much. I know I do. The premium membership, what this is about is taking all of those courses and now you don't have to, oh man, I don't know which one I want. I mean, you get them all for one price. If you add up the cost of every price uh, of all of our of our programs, you're looking at over twenty one hundred dollars. Not even including um, the monthly membership, which gives you access to, uh, uh, among many things, weekly lives where we get in front of the camera just like this and answer any question. Uh, really any question, but definitely any dog related question, training, nutrition, otherwise to the absolute best of our ability. And I think that's the number one thing that our member, we've done polls and we've asked, that seems to be the number one thing that they love about it. So now what you have when you take these courses, number one, if you're taking the course and you're watching the video and you have any questions about what you're watching, you post in the comments, I reply back, I reply back to you personally, because I don't want any issues as far as like, misinformation wrong thing uh typically my replies like pages long right because i want to make sure you have everything you need and you can always as a student look and see what other people have commented you can see my replies and we just kind of iron out anything that might be like confusing uh next also we also add videos like if i find that there's a question that comes up a lot rather than continue to answer it by typing it. We just put a new video and we insert that. And now we continue to expand the courses, living, breathing courses. But then the weekly lives are there to answer anything else that like comes up in the interim, right? Some random things that maybe the course doesn't cover. Uh, we, we will answer that and cover it. So what we're doing with the premium membership is we're rolling in all of the courses, all the perks of the membership into a one-stop shop. And I know y'all are waiting. What's the price going to be? So here's the pricing. We talked about what board and trains can cost, $2,500 up to four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 or more. Your private lesson training, anything that's worth a damn is going to be like $3,000 or more. 
what we're trying to do is come in underneath all of that. So there's absolutely no excuse why anyone can't access these courses and get top notch professional level training from the comfort of their home. And the price is we are starting our pricing at twelve hundred dollars. Now, I know you say, God damn, Garrett, that's a lot of money. I know that. I know it is. But it's less than half of what you would pay for someone else to train your dog, but not train you. And we already saw what the results are with Adriana. She's just one an example of, of many. And by the way, I can't even tell you how many people have come to our board and train program or come to our DIY canine courses after spending three, four, five, six thousand dollars having a trainer train their dog, but not train them. And then the dog one week, two weeks later reverts back to their old ways. So there has to be something better. Yeah, there is something better. It's what we do here. And we're really passionate about it. Now, for twelve hundred dollars, we're going to do you one better. For our launch, for those that are watching this, when you sign up, we are offering $252 off of the course. Why $252? Because it puts it at this beautiful number, $947 for everything you would ever need to train your dog from zero to hero. So $947. We will literally hold your hand uh, through the courses. I say literally, I'm not going to hold your hand. I mean, unless we come to a training session in person, which we are going to start doing that. But uh, the digital version of holding your hand, we should say. Me, uh, my team of trainers, my amazing team of moderators, we are there to support you because our success depends upon your success. You, you don't believe us? Check out the Google reviews, stellar reviews, uh, five-star reviews. And again, you'll see where people are, are, are coming from. Uh, oftentimes, they, they say where they live. And again, all over the world, people are having success with all manner, ages, size of dogs. And so for $947, uh, you are going to get more training out of it than any board and train program you can send your dog to. Point blank, period. Now, I'm not going to lie. The beauty of a board and train program is someone does it for you. You're going to pay for that. But again, we go back to I don't care who trains your dog or how much money you spend training it. If you don't know how to maintain that training, your dog will revert in 48 hours to two weeks. Your dog is going to go right back to being whatever it is before you sent it. And the other thing is, um, you know, when you do a board and train program, that's four to six weeks that you're not with your dog, bonding with your dog, training with your dog, establishing that type of relationship with your dog. Somebody else is doing that for you. And when your dog comes back, you won't have that level of respect, that level of authority, uh, that, that level of love and, and respect, engagement, everything that comes from training the dog. Like nothing is more... I, it's really just beautiful. I, I don't have a word for it. it. It's so many things. I mean, that's why we do it for a living. It is to this day, I get just as excited and giddy when we get a dog, any dog, every dog that we train, when they overcome these little training hurdles and they improve like right before your eyes. Like you start a training session and halfway through at the end of the training session, the dog's, the dog's got it. And it's like, I, if I could do backflips, I would. I would throw my back out. But I'm doing like a mental backflip. I'm like, woo, high five in the team. And like, like it, it's a rush to this day. Like, yes, we got it. We got it. And I'm happy. The dog knows you're happy. And it's just like this symbiotic thing that, that cannot be replicated anywhere. And it's one thing to throw the ball for your dog. It's another thing to like really do something together. Almost like your minds are coming together. Uh, your spirits. Your, you know, I'm not trying to get too, too you know, hippie on you. But it's something really beautiful that that cannot be replicated anywhere. Maybe like, yeah, if you're like riding horses or something. But when you when you have that connection with an animal, that's what it's all about. And uh, that that's one of the things that we can provide in our courses, right? Because we show you how to do it. And I don't know. Love it. Love it. Nothing. Nothing gives me more enjoyment um, than that. Uh, except maybe. When I'm talking about me training a dog and having those breakthroughs, it, it it's just, you can't replicate it. But when I have those same connections with other humans who are having that connection with dogs and I'm able to make that happen, that might trump that. I don't know. They're, they're pretty closely tied because we've been able to have people train their dogs and have those moments. And then when they come back to me and, and we get the reviews or the emails and the letters, um, man, it warms my heart. It just, I'm so proud 
uh, that people were able to do. They send in their videos showing what their dogs are capable of. And then we have challenges. These folks are, they're going crazy in the challenges, downstate challenges, recall challenges. Uh, and you see what they're able to do on these videos. It's, it's so impressive. So anyways, uh, I have no script. Just there's nothing in front of me. There's a coffee that I've been trying to drink, but talking too much. My wife made me this. Looks how pretty this is. Um, you've been looking at me for a minute. So if you want to find out uh, more about it, you want to get on, on the waiting list for it. I'm not going to make you wait long. The, the premium membership launch is this Tuesday. So in two days time, I think around 7 a.m., we're going to send out emails uh, to the folks who have registered. All you got to do is go to our website, DIYK9.com. You literally just put in your name, your email address, and your phone number. We don't spam you. We don't do anything with the phone number. It's for uh, customer service purposes, like if, if you have a technical issue or something like that, uh, which is very rare, thank God. That's it. We're going to send you an email with a link, with a special coupon code. And uh, with that coupon code, you're going to be able to bring the price down to $947. But wait, there's more. That's right. The ShamWow guy. Here I am. This is something we've been waiting on for a long time, and that is Afterpay. Afterpay uh, should be available. Uh, it's actually out of our control, but we are being told uh, by mid-August uh, we will have Afterpay available. So now not only is it uh, already you know pretty affordable dog training for what you're getting, like the value is there, but you're going to be able to split the payments up, which thank God. You know, um, now, as far as the pricing goes, once this promotional period ends, the pricing is going to go back up to twelve hundred dollars, uh, eleven ninety nine to be exact, one thousand one hundred ninety nine dollars, which is still just an absolute steal. A ton of value there, because, again, if you were to buy all the courses individually, twenty one hundred dollars, if you were to send your dog to a board and train program, even the McDonald's crappy one is twenty five hundred dollars. Um, but we are going to be. You again, bundling all of this plus the membership plus live weekly live Q and A's with me every week. Haven't missed one yet, uh, and we're like thirty eight weeks in because um, I'm really passionate about it. Uh, I, I I can't even describe to you. I think it's just an incredible value, and so that's what it is. Nine hundred and forty seven dollars. If you get it on sale, that sale, this launch sale, is only going to run for twelve days. Uh, the cutoff would be. Uh, don't quote me on it, but starting from Tuesday, there will be a 12-day window. And the reason we did a 12-day window is we wanted to give everyone an opportunity. It's going to go over two weekends. The reason for that is my team uh, thought of this, and it made a lot of sense. Most folks get paid on a, on a Thursday or a Friday or a Saturday when that money hits. We don't want someone to miss out on the sale uh, because they they their paycheck hadn't come in or something like that. So. We, we wanted to give a, a really strong, uh, big opportunity, a big window for folks to, to get it if they want it. Again, if, if you don't need it, then don't get it. Don't waste your money on something you don't need. If, if you have, you're getting a puppy, you have a puppy, you have a dog, and you want that obedience, that true, real, real world obedience that we're talking about. You can take your dog anywhere. You can travel with them. Uh, what we call service dog qualified. Everything but the specific service tasks, such as like uh, seizure dogs or diabetic detection dogs. Every, we don't talk about this a lot because we don't want like any false advertising, but I will say it here. Everybody wants that service dog, right? They want to be able to take their dog into restaurants, onto airplanes, and travel with them in hotels, all of the benefits. I know what you're talking about. I do it every day. That's what we do. Every single dog that leaves our training program is what we call service dog qualified, if not, in fact, a full-fledged service dog. It's just that some folks don't have uh, an actual medical need, and so the dog doesn't have the – I can't – I'm not going to teach a dog to be a diabetic detection dog uh, for an owner that doesn't have diabetes. It just doesn't make sense. Plus, why pay for that? But there's two things every service dog needs, and people don't talk about this too much, but maybe I get to educate you on it. First and foremost, the, the, the building block, the base layer, the – the foundation of what a service dog must be at all times is, you guessed it, obedient here, there, and everywhere. You, the, and then the second thing, of course, is that they have to perform a specific service dog task, right? What are, what are those? Uh, PTSD dog, 
uh, seizure detection dog, diabetes detection dog. It's not that they're detecting diabetes. They're detecting low blood sugar. Uh, and you name it. There's a bunch. Seeing eye dog, etc. But let's just take this for an example. You have a dog that knows, uh, an, an interesting little side note, how does a dog know when you have low blood sugar? When someone who's diabetic is starting to have low blood sugar, their breath changes. It becomes very sweet. It's like a chemical reaction. And we train the dogs to smell that and to detect on that specific person what it smells like when they're going into low blood sugar. And the dog will alert, notify the owner, etc. So that's a cool thing, right, for a dog to know. This would be a, uh, you know, a diabetic dog. If the dog performs that service task and it performs it to a really high level, wonderful. However, if it is a completely wild animal outside of that, jumping on people, eating food off of tables, barking, doesn't listen, drags you on the leash, that's not a service dog because it doesn't have the core obedience. In fact, if you read the ADA uh, guidelines, the Americans with Disabilities Act, the entire um, – once you would call it, but like all the material about it, which we've read numerous times over all, but have it memorized, not word for word. It's not, it's not uh, that complicated, but what it says is, and this is really interesting. And I hope you guys remember this. Even if your dog is quote, a service dog, fully trained by you, by the way, you can train your own service dog. We'll come back to that in a second or, or a professional dog trying to train it, whatever. If it comes into a place of business and is acting out of control, is acting wild, is not under the strict control of the owner, uh, the business owner or manager or employees can still ask and demand that you leave. And they have every legal authority to do that because some of these service dogs, folks, are going a little crazy. Right. And I say that lightly because there's all manners of it. Uh they think that just because their dog has a service dog vest on and they have a fake registration card, by the way, every single service dog registration card you see on the internet is fake, fake, F A K E fake as hell. It, it doesn't exist. There is no registration for service dogs and there is no paperwork for service dogs. We should do a live about that one day. Just to get the truth out there. But let's just say you got all the, the BS. You got the service dog vest. You got your little registration card. You got the paperwork, fake, fake paperwork, by the way. And it's been trained by you or somebody else. And the dog is, uh, you know, the, is a diabetic detection dog or whatever it is. If it goes in a restaurant and is barking at people, trying to bite people, uh, going after other dogs, uh, pulling you on a leash, jumping on tables, a, a, a annoying guests in a restaurant or on a plane, they have a right to refuse you service. And they are protected by the same exact federal guidelines that offer service dog protections. There's also the, the little addendum in there that offers protection uh, to business owners for people with, you know, we'll put big air quotes here, service dogs that aren't really doing what they're supposed to be doing. So all of that's to be said that um, when dogs leave our training program or when you train your dog at home to the level that we're able to show you in our DIY canine uh, training courses, your dog will be what we refer to as service dog qualified, which is what it's all about. And you can even fake it till you make it because if your dog comes in acting like a perfect gentleman or a perfect lady, there's nobody going to question you as to whether it's a service dog or not because God damn, look how, look how good that dog behaves. And you know what ends up happening, but, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna brag here a little bit. If I may, one of the things that like gets me giddy all the time, is when we have our clients, our clients, whether they're board and trains, but more importantly, our DIY canine clients, tell us that when they take their dog out in public, they constantly get stopped and asked for business cards because they think they're a professional dog trainer and they want to get their dog to look like their dog. And guess what? When that happens enough, now we have DIY canine students who've come just to train their own dog are now becoming professional dog trainers. Based off our courses and our courses alone, they have everything they need to train just about every dog from zero to hero. Now, what am I saying just about every dog? There are some extreme cases of aggression. That's not covered. Uh, we don't cover bite work in these courses, at least not yet. So anyways, we're talking your average, you know, nine out of 10 dogs, 99 out of 100 dogs, 
that and, and owners that just want that really high level obedience, that service dog qualified dog that they can take anywhere and everywhere because the freaking perfect dog. And that's what we teach. And that's what I'm proud of. And if that's something you're interested uh, in, whether you want to pursue a career as a professional dog trainer, or you just want to have the best dog you could ever ask for. We have the answer for you. I say that boldly. I say that loudly. I say that clearly. I make no uh, apologies. Our courses are badass. They, I'm trying not to curse. They're good. They're really good. And um, if, if they weren't, I wouldn't have them up because I have too much pride in in putting out an inferior product. And and even still, to the detriment of my entire team, they want me to do a new course. It's called the Wing Academy. I'm not going to go too deep into it, but it's how you. Tr we're going to start training folks like you if you're interested to leave their nine to five uh or, or coming out of college or high school and they want to become professional dog trainers and make a lot of money doing it uh or they're already professional dog trainers but they want to improve their craft and improve their business sense we're coming out with something we're right now calling the wing academy where we're going to be training professional dog trainers across the world through our online platform and subsequent in-person training to make them the best that they can be. That's a huge undertaking that we're about to do. And we've been putting it off because I'm so OCD, I guess you could say. I am before I'm like before I put out a new product, I want to go back to the products we already have and improve them. We literally just doubled the size of our puppy essential sports. Our puppy essential sports has been out like I want to say like a year, year and a half. Killer reviews on it. People love it, but it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. And so I went back in and I, I doubled the size of the course because that's what needed to be done. It needed more depth. It needed more information. And so that's what we provided. And I will do that again in the future. We're going to make it even better and even better. And we're going to do that with all of our courses. The next course that's going to have uh, version 2.0 come out is our Unleashed course. Um, beautiful as it is, but we want to add in even more content. But that, that's just to give you an idea like how we run our operation here. And, and anyways, um, got off way deep on this. Like I said, nothing scripted. Uh, if if y'all want to find out more, DIY canine, uh, a lot of, we got the FAQ page there. Um, feel free to email us, info at DIYK9.com. I have the best customer service team on the planet. Um, ask questions in our Facebook groups. Check those out. Uh, when you become a member, uh, which can happen through our premium membership. We also are going to have a monthly and an annual membership. Uh, but you're going to check that out on our website on Tuesday. That will go live. Uh, and we'll have 12 days to look at it, think about it, uh, make a decision, um, do your research, see what it costs to send your dog to board and train program, uh, really discuss and, and weigh the pros and cons. And, and hey, really ask yourself, if you have uh, the level of commitment to do it. And, and we don't talk about this a lot and I probably should talk about it more. What does it take? What does it take to achieve? Like, God, Garrett, I don't have four hours a day to train my dog. You don't need four hours. You know how much you need? Five to 15 minutes a day. That's it. Five to 15 minutes a day. And guess what? You're probably walking your dog for five or 15 minutes. You're probably spending X amount of time preparing their food for five or 15 minutes. You're probably playing with them for five or 15 minutes a day. That's exactly right. It's when you're feeding them, it's when you're walking them, and when you're playing with them that you should be training them. We make the training part of the feeding. We make the training on the walk. We make the training while we're playing. When you do training right, it's fun for the dog. And so that's all we're saying is like, instead of just throwing the ball for your dog, why don't we make it a game, a training game, where they're actually learning something we're getting those reps in and the dog's getting that fire obedience. And when you're going for a walk, instead of your dog just dragging you down the street the wrong way, why don't we show them how to walk the right way and then your walk's more enjoyable, et cetera, et cetera. So it doesn't really take a lot of time. Uh, in fact, you might argue it takes less time. It takes less time to teach your puppy not to pee in the house than it is to clean up the pee pee mess that they made. It takes less time to teach your dog to stop chewing on the couch than it costs you in time and money to replace the couch that they chewed. It takes, uh, and so on and so forth, you know. And so we show you how you use food and motivation and, and the proper tools, how to use them properly to get that type of obedience you want so that you're spending your time enjoying your dog and not like just wishing, you know, wishing 
you didn't get the dog, God forbid, or, or, or you name it. And, and that's what it's all about. So anyways, we're right at the 10, uh, the 10 o'clock mark, it's been an hour on the dot. Um, I got to get, uh, back to the family. We're here on a little vacation. First one in, in like three years. And, uh, my amazing wife's right there off camera. She's not camera ready yet. Um, I don't think those deer, I've probably been too loud and scared those deers away. They haven't come yet. But anyways, I'm going to run. Again, if you have any questions, info at DIYK9.com. Just email us. All you got to do is go to the, the webpage, register. Um, that's just so we have your email, so we know who we're sending it to. And then on Tuesday, we're going to send out a few emails um, telling you more about the options that are available, more about the courses we offer, more about who we are. Uh, with the coupon code, special coupon code just for y'all that sign up. Uh, and it's it's uh, really a once in a lifetime opportunity uh, because we don't plan to ha have a, a, we're never going to have a launch sale again. This is it. This is the launch sale. And we're going to give it 12 days. It's like 12 days of Christmas, but in, in, in August. And uh, hopefully, not hopefully. Yeah, hopefully you join us. But I was going to say, hopefully we help you train your dog. No, 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 not hope. We're going to train your dog, folks. We're going to do it together as a team uh, with with my my all my my staff, my moderators, and all the others in the community who are all about getting their dogs to be the best that they can do. And we really hope to see you in the membership. We hope to see you in our courses. I hope to see you in my weekly lives and, and walk and talk you through everything you need to make your dog the best that they can be. And and that's my promise to you. That's what we're here for. And um, I think I'll end on this too. For those of you that that know about the, the nonsense that's been going on this last week or so on social media, the social media, just drama, the crap, the BS, the, the ugly. Uh, we put a video out yesterday. It's available now on YouTube. It's over an hour long, but it sets the record straight. And uh, anyways, for those of you who are aware of it, all I want to say is thank you. We've had an outpouring like I've never seen before in my entire career. On social media or otherwise, of, of many heartfelt thank yous to us and 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 support, and I, I'm almost I'm I'm speechless, and I'm not one to get very speechless, but I just want to say thank you for your support, and, and I, that's not even enough. Like there, there's no way for me to verbalize how much it means to me and my family the the level of support that you all have offered us, and it's really heartwarming. And uh, I just leave it at that. So. Thank you. Thank you all very, very much. All right. Happy training your dogs. We'll see you in the courses.